YouTube. I need more subscribers. Why are you not recommending my videos to people? Hey, welcome back to the channel. <laughs> I'm Yogi, and yes, I have a punching bag in my garage now. And it's for reasons like you just saw here. When I get frustrated and I want to throw a tool or yell, I'm slap on my gloves and start knocking out this subscribe button here because somebody has to, right? I mean, I need more subscribers, but anyway. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, we're back with Project Pepper and uh, the engine's done. It's right here next to Yogi Mama. And I've just been busy getting things done in the car and I've been recording some video as I go along. But I wanted to give you guys an update this week and show you what's involved in getting the engine in there now, prepping the car, because if you're a loyal follower, thank you for that, first of all, then you'll know that the interior of the car was a wreck as well. I had to repair the rust. I had to get the seats taken out, took the carpet out, put new carpet in, going with black interior with a gray contrast. So that's what I want to show you. There's a lot of things that still need to be uh, prepped, like the hoses underneath the car all need to be replumbed. I got to swap out the old hoses with the new hoses. I didn't buy all new hoses, I bought some. And I've kind of mapped it out and it looks like I did about 50% of all the hoses underneath there have been replaced. So that's good. I didn't want to do all of them because I'd make it too easy. Um, so I've got to get all that done. And then I can put the engine in. And I've been looking at my notes and looking at what it's going to take to get the, the actual engine back into the bay. That's the easy part. It's getting it all replumbed, getting everything wired back in, and then starting it. So I got to get all this done first. Well, that's what this video is going to be about, is getting the car ready to go, show you what it's like, and then hopefully get it in. So let's get going. Project Pepper, let's fix it. All right, so I've been making a checklist and I've called it, and I'm calling it my pre-liftoff checklist. And I've got, a quite a, I've got quite a few things to do. I'm recording this clip after I've taken care of these, but I'll for sure show you what it took to get all that buttoned up underneath and in the front as well. Uh, that all needs to be done. And you can see that I still need to do the index in the IMS oil line. That's important, obviously. Here's the interesting thing. I can't find the freaking fuel filter for this car. I've never really known a car not to have a fuel filter. It's not where the 996.1s put the fuel filter, which is in the actual trans tunnel right in the middle of the car. It's not in there. So I got to find it. I'm going to have to do some research and figure that out because I know this car has to have a fuel filter. Uh, front engine bracket. Those are those studs that bolt onto the front so you can put the bracket on. I got to get that done. And I gotta sort the interior, man. I've got um, no seats in there right now. In fact, one of them's right there and the other one's right over there. I just haven't done it yet because, uh, you know, I've been doing a lot of welding and things like that and I didn't want any of the sparks to, or anything to get on my, my uh, expensive chairs. So, and I gotta flush the trans fluid. That's some low hanging fruit. 
All right, so you can you guys can see that I have a lot going on here, but it's a lot of just you know ancillary stuff. Nothing really uh, like oh shit, I forgot a bolt or something. No, it's just a lot of brackets that I got to figure out where they go. A lot of clips. I also wanted to show you this here. This is uh, the sleeve that I found, and the guy who recommended I'm going to put his information here on the screen. He's from, uh, he's a Renless mem member. I put out an APB that I needed something to replace this stuff that is used to wrap the lines here. <clears throat> and he recommended this place. And it's not cheap. It's about 30 bucks, but I have plenty. I can cut the length down to where I need it for this right here, right? And then I'll have plenty left to clean this up as well. So this is gonna go in nice and clean. And yes, I still haven't bought this hose cause I refuse to. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna try to find a way of getting that cheaper if I had to replace it or hell, I'll just use some surgical tubing. I, it's, it's a matter of principle for me at this point that I don't see and I don't think anyone can justify that there is a 70, that there's $70 worth of value here. I mean, I guess if it keeps your car from starting, um, then yeah, I guess that that's a good point, but not. Oh, shoot. I just figured out where that goes. I just posted that on Renless, but now I know where it goes. It goes right there. I was like, hey, where does this go? Boom. There it is. Okay. <laughs> now they're all accounted for. I got one more. This goes to the throttle body. Now all the connectors are done. One of my knock sensors. Not that one, but the other one was disconnected and I had to get Yogi Mama's tiny little hands in there again and clip it in for me, thank goodness. So she's a big help. Anyway, all right, I'm gonna cut that down and then we gotta take care of this car behind us. I've got a lot of things that need to be done. Like all of my coolant lines you can see there are all disconnected because I want it I wanted almost 100% drain out of all of the green coolant that the previous, previous owner put in this car. Uh, and then I got to do the same thing on the other side and reconnect everything. And then I have a bunch of pipes that I dropped down underneath when I was welding and repairing the floorboard. And then, of course, we also have to take care of that transmission back there. I want to drain the fluid and put some new stuff in there. And there you can see, yeah, see the pipes right there. Those pipes are hanging low. No big deal. I just got to reattach them. And then replumb them with some new, oh, I've got some new hoses there too. I'm going to take care of and get rid of that thing. But uh, yeah, so a lot of prep work that needs to happen in order to get the engine back in here. And I've made an arrangement to have the whole engine bay and the underside dry ice clean. But unfortunately, he can't come to me. So I got to put the engine back in here and drive it over there. And then this girl's gonna get a complete undercarriage dry ice. And I'm gonna show that on my in a future video, so be sure to stick around for that. But yeah, I mean, I can't put a new engine, new to me anyway, in this dirty engine bay. So we gotta take care of that. I got all this laid out on my um, freezer here because every counter in my, have you ever noticed that? If the more The more counters you have in your garage, the more crap you just put on it, so yeah, I don't have any place to work, so I'm gonna work right here. All right, so I've got this, and it's weird. I think this is from the same supplier. The fabric almost looks identical, and the size and everything, the 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 layout. You can see a lot of this has come off already. Um, so I think this is the, the actual supplier, if you ask me. Uh, so yeah, so I'm gonna make sure the length is right, and what better way to do that than to use a a marker, a wood and glass marker, I think it's gonna look really good on there, and I have a straight edge to keep it nice and square. So let's see. Oh, and then I borrowed my I borrowed Yogi Mama's fabric scissors, and she she made me sign sign them out. So I got to return them soon. Let's see what the big deal is. Wow. I think they're actually better if you use the just the tip part of it. Yeah, look at that. It cuts right through it, man. And there, look at that. Wow, that looks really good. That'll wash away there soon. And I don't see any fraying happening. So yeah, that's gonna work out great, man. And I wanna take this one off and do okay, the same so thing. Apparently this, you're wrapping around cables and this is just 
too wide. You needed it for too that, small. Yeah, for the ones in the front. Yeah. So um, we can't use glue because it's hot and gonna melt. And mm -hmm. so what I did was I took this and I stitched it down. And so I did little spots this way and then all along the ridge. That way it won't roll. Oh, nice. So I did that on both <clears throat> sides. And so now it's much smaller. Excellent. Let's go give it a try. Okay. And it connects these two. Shoot, look at that. It was like it was meant to be. Yay! And this one over here, doesn't that look great? So much better than that old ratty stuff. Much better. Thank you, Yogi Mama. You're welcome, Yogi. You get a kiss on the cheek. I got a kiss on the cheek. Yeah, and then my transmission decided to dump all of its transmission fluid all over my driveway. So I got to move this guy out of the way. And this is priority is to get this cleaned up. I'm going to sell this thing. This was the original bumper brace that came on the car when I bought it. Uh, the previous, previous owner obviously got into a wreck and then didn't even bother to replace this. I mean, this could have been bent in, back into place and uh, welded, you know, but they didn't even do that. But look, it's broken on this side too. They didn't even bother doing that. But a new bumper brace, like you can see here, is not that expensive, believe it or not. Uh, I had to get a new shock on the inside there too. So I have a new shock. Uh, new to me bumper brace and yeah, it's ready to be bolted back in. I just haven't done it yet because I'm uh, You know looking at this mess here and thinking Not today Yogi not today. Take your eyes off of it. You don't need to clean it now. Just get the hoses back So yeah, I'm taking the bumper off so I can get the hoses connected back together and uh, I'm, I'm dragging my feet in case you haven't noticed because I'm really nervous Looks pretty good though, doesn't it? today. What are you doing down there? Well, I had to take some of this plumbing down when I uh, had to repair the floorboard here. And now I've, you know, procrastinated long enough and I got to put it all back in. So that's what I'm doing. And I'm replumbing everything and replacing some, not all of the hoses. Because all is expensive. And a lot of these hoses are in good shape. Okay, I am done. Uh, I didn't want to stress out the system. These clips are real fragile. Um, man, I just really want to just clean everything. But like I said, I think I'm going to do a dry ice on this underside. But anyway, the plumbing's all done. Uh, I had to get everything pushed back up underneath. And it's beautifully plumbed now. Look at that. There's a couple of those little brackets that uh, like right there... They, they, right here, they're rubber and they've rotten out, but most of them survived. The ones that didn't, I have a list, I'm making a list of things that need to be replaced, but everything's plumbed back up. I have a couple more uh, hoses to put back in and then we're ready for the coolant. Well, once the engine's in. I got some gross hoses in here as well as the uh, transmission brackets and some other things that are in there in that soup getting cleaned. And then here are all of the wheel liners and a couple of them are broken and they're wicked expensive and I can't get them from anywhere in, on eBay that's not from Lithuania and they're not budging on their prices. So they're like $225 each. Yeah, so these here are really expensive and it, something broke off right there. But I'm gonna try to make use of this. There's an arrow part, some arrow, some uh, arrow plastic fins or something on this that you can see the overspray from the terrible job they did. 
So yeah, I'm gonna try to keep using these because they're, like I said, $225. These are fine. These are way expensive and I'm glad these are fine. These will go, those go on the back wheels. Uh, so lots of cleaning and stuff. Here's an example of one of the hoses that I replaced. And these hoses in here are really nice and soft. There's nothing wrong with them. They were just on sale during Black Friday. So I got the ones that were on sale. And this is only one of the two. And I've been kind of doing that, buying 50%. Like the coolant lines that go underneath here, there's two that crisscross right by the transmission that I only replaced one of them. But they're both in really good shape. Again, it's on sale. Whew, okay, so these are all clean now. One thing I noticed right away is that there's some rust buildup here on the bottom. And this is this is the transmission bracket. And I have a feeling that he, the driver probably bottomed out here. You can see the the scrapes and it, it matches some of the, the wounds on the engine block itself. So I'm going to grind that up. I've got a couple of wire wheels here, uh, a die grinder. And then once I'm done with that, I'm going to hit it with some uh, high heat Rust-Oleum. And then the rust encapsulator is going to be used for the the muffler brackets. These these right here, these I don't know what they are, they're cast iron or something, but they're it's pretty rusty. So I need to try to save that because those look like they're welded on, and I'd have to replace the whole thing. So I'm gonna try to save them. I'm pretty sure I can, and then clean all of this up, and then I'm gonna clean up these as well. So. Like what happens on Yogi's Garage, none of this goes back dirty. So you ready? And there. Wow, that uh, was a lot of work. <laughs> a lot of unnecessary work, I think, but necessary for me and my well-being. I like things to be clean, and if they get a little shiny in the process, hey, that's extra bonus for me. Uh, you can also see that I spray-painted the mounting points uh, reason being, like I showed you earlier, they were pretty rusty. And now I've got some rust encapsulator on those ends to keep them from, and that one's still got some tape on it, to keep them from, um, from rusting any further. As far as the braces here, I used a matte black, so it doesn't really match all that much, but it doesn't matter. It's under the car. I just wanted to cover up some of the rust on this thing. So I've got the transmission bracket and this yoke looking thing, which also goes to the transmission. It's ready to go. These two brackets go on the front mount right there, which I have not installed because I have not installed those studs there. So I gotta get that done. All right, I've got the rear engine support in place and uh, torqued in, kind of, sort of. Now I'm ready to just finish it up. I got one more screw that goes in right there sure what the function is for that. I'll have to look that up. See, now I did it. I made a clean spot. Now I gotta clean the whole thing. Yes, I'm giving my engine an enema right before I lift it off the stand. No, actually what I'm getting ready to do, and some of you guys may know what this is, but I'm getting ready to do a leak test, right? So I'm, I bought this, I put an affiliate link below so that you can see it. I've got this ready to go. Uh, it came with this kit, so make sure you get the one that I recommend because it comes with this plug kit. Yeah, and it also comes with this uh, EVAP system tester as well so you can do smoke tests in your evap system so it's very handy can you make this on your own 
Yes. Do you have to? No. These little plugs here come undrilled, but I just drilled a 7 30 seconds hole or a 17 30 seconds hole, something like that. Push this through and there's a little, you can see the flange right there on the other side, it hooks onto it. So it'll stay in. I expect a little bit of smoke there, but that's the only place I should expect smoke. So I've got the compressor fully charged. I'm gonna turn it off so that we don't blow our eardrums out and put some air in this thing and see what happens. And I got a battery right there too, because you need power. All right, now we got smoke. Now we're blowing smoke into this thing. Let's take a look. So we've got smoke coming out of here, but that's, you can see it wants to pop up, see? What we're looking for is smoke anywhere else. And again, you can see that that is a little smoky, but I think that helps a lot when I put my hand over it. But what I'm looking for is any type of leaks between the seals, because I want to make sure I don't get a vacuum leak. Oop, I see some right from right there. It's not a bad vacuum leak, but it is a vacuum leak. All right. So here's another leak right there from the hinge, which is on the other side of this guy here. But that looks like that's the only place that's smoky. Look at that smoke spill out of there. Man, that is so cool. Okay, I think I got a plan for this right here. This is what's leaking the smoke. This apparently on the Renless forms is a pretty common area for it to leak. And if you look here, it's not really that serviceable either. There's no snap ring. That black ring in the middle is not an O-ring, it's, it's metal. I didn't come up with this solution, but the one that I did come up with would have worked, but it would have been a little too janky for my taste. The recommendation came from this guy right here. And I really wanna thank him and the other people that chimed in about this particular issue and albeit you know a minor leak is still a leak that could cause fuel air mixture issues and i want to avoid that obviously on a brand new engine so here's what i got so i picked up these here not exactly the same brand that was on the forum post but this works just fine it's three quarters of an inch thank you for that too I didn't have to do my uh, math conversions. But anyway, they, they come in a set of four and uh, they're perfectly wide enough to go over this. And to be honest, you could put that on there without any type of sealant and it would do a great job. Uh, however, I'm gonna go ahead and use some sealant for this and I'm gonna use JB Weld Plastic Bonder. I'm gonna mix it up, put it on the edge of that thing and then, and then seal it on there and uh, let it cure up. It should be just fine, and then I'll do another vacuum test. So this is pretty easy. All right, so I mixed it up. Now I gotta hurry because it's gonna heat, it's gonna cure pretty quick. And then I'm gonna put it along the lip there, and then I'm gonna jam it on. Okay, and then we're just gonna put this on. I should just go right over. Yeah, look at that. There right, you go. Perfect. Look at that beautiful fit. In about 15 minutes, it should be cured up and then I'll, I'm gonna button all this up and we'll get the next smoke test going. Thanks again, man. All right, I'm running the smoke test again. It should be slowly filling up here and we'll see if there's any leaks coming from this area here. And if not, then we are in, in the clear. So far, so good. Just want to make sure I'm still blowing smoke. Yep, still blowing smoke. Man, this is awesome. No leaks anywhere. Nothing. Yes. Okay, no more excuses, Yogi. It's time to get it in.
Whew, this one's always a little stressful when I do this. You can see that the stand is out of the way. I got the yoke still attached for now, but it's sitting on my ATV stand and that should be adequate. But I had to figure out a way of snaking these ratchet straps in to put as little stress as possible on the intake manifold, as well as the exhaust brackets or any type of plastic or, or sensors, things like that. So this is pretty much as good as it's gonna get. I went across underneath on the sump. I tucked in the ratchet strap right here underneath the heat shield. There's just no way that this thing could handle the weight. It would just end up busting it. Same thing here. This one's tucked in underneath next to the sensor, but not on the solenoid. And uh, yeah, it, wor it worked out, so that's good. This looks good for now. I'm gonna take this yoke off. Then I'm gonna finish up the rear main seal. It's a little off on this side. I need to push it in a little bit further. And then we'll get the dual mass flywheel and then the clutch and then the transmission. Get in there. Let's do it. I cannot believe I what I'm looking at. I know. It is crazy. I cannot believe it. I, I can't get this eating grin off my face either. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> it looks amazing, man. Take hey. it off. Take, Take it off. off. Take, Take it, it off. off. <laughs> it's off. It's off. <laughs> Ooh, I found a dirty spot. Gotta clean that now. Where's the dirty spot? Right Show there. me. There, it's dirty. Oh, that's filthy. I will know it's dirty. And so will I and everyone <laughs> who watches this. Okay. February 14th is when we'll start this. It's going to spend the next two weeks cleaning it. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get that spot out. No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. All right. All right. Dual mass flywheel is ready to go. It's made by Luke. Uh, that's an OEM brand, even though it didn't say Porsche on it, it is. And then the clutch is a Sax, which is also an OEM brand as well. I'm going to clean that up with some brake cleaner, carb cleaner, whatever. Get it lined up and then run those bolts in. And then I think I have a tool that's going to be able to hold the flywheel in place so I can torque to yield those bolts. But um, yeah, let's get started with this. This is a, These are T30s. You need new bolts. I got a bunch of them right there. And we're going to get it on literally and figuratively because we're approaching the end and I'm in a really good mood. Let's do it. Okay, dual mass flywheel is in. You saw that spill I, I took there. I may not even show it, but I'm gonna joke about it now and then I'll cut it out if I don't wanna use it. But yeah, that chair slipped out from underneath me. Luckily I had my um, wits about me and I used my ass to break the fall of the dual mass flywheel because you know that's worth more than my ass. So it's in place, I don't have it torqued, but it looks good. I verified that the crank position sensor does have a nice pretty gap going on right there. So it is seeing those teeth. So let's get that torqued in and then I'll figure out the next step. All right, I've already torqued up the bolts. They're not a whole, there's not a whole lot of power behind that. It's 25 Newton meters or 19 foot pounds. I mean, easy. But take a look at this tool that I picked up. It's a flywheel counter hold tool and it's meant for you to hold. And sometimes it's better to get another person to help you, but you hold this while you're torquing these to yield. So Yogi Mama's here with me off camera, she's gonna counter hold this while I do the 90 degree turn and I'll see you on the nope. other side. Thank you, Yogi Mama. You're welcome, Yogi. All right, torque to yield. Man, this tool was awesome. Yogi Mama could hold this with one hand and mark the witness marks on the bolts after I've tor uh, torqued them. So you can see a blue for the initial torque, like I said, is 25 Newton meters and then a 90 degree torque to yield all the way around in a star pattern and you're golden. Okay, so I'm gonna get the clutch on, but first I'm gonna hit it with some brake cleaner, carb cleaner to get that surface nice and clean, and then we will get the clutch on. We're almost done.
All right, well, uh, I've got this thing ready to go. This universal thing's gonna work. So there, it comes in two pieces. This little tapered piece here is what slides into the actual bearing here in the middle. And you gotta find the right size. That's why it's a universal. And then you gotta find the right size for this collar as well. And I found it and it fits in there beautifully. And so basically you put that in like that and like that, and that aligns it. And then you can put the actual pressure plate of the clutch on at this point. And there are little dowels here that will align that will align to the pressure plate and you screw it on. Simple as that. See how easy that is? All right. It's been a Yogi's Tech Tip. This is my first clutch I've ever installed. And she's like, well, we gotta record that. So, yes, this is my first clutch. I've done plenty of torque converters and normal flywheels, but I've never done a dual mass flywheel clutch and ever on a Porsche. So, check, check, right? You, you, pop, you popped your clutch cherry. I, <laughs> I popped my clutch cherry, yes, I popped my clutch cherry. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> People think it's so hard, it's not hard, it's easy. What's this noise coming down my street? Oh, yes. <laughs> this Mr. Texas Squirrel himself. Bruce here helped me out with this, and I'd never even thought about this, but using like a, a quarter inch extension to help line up the bolt holes so that you can get the shaft as close as possible to the, to the splines and then should go right in. Let's give it a go. All right, it's in. It's about an hour and a half later and we finally got it in. That was not fun. At first I thought it was an alignment issue with the splines, so I realigned the clutch or verified that it was aligned. And then we used a combination of three jacks, but the, this uh, floor jack here was the best one because we were able to get underneath on that little knob there or that uh, mounting point and give that engine just the right angle to line it all up. But yes, we did have to use the bolts to kind of run the, the 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 case and the transmission together because we just weren't getting it aligned right. But once we got them semi in, and then I put the jack underneath, you heard that lovely hollow clunk sound of a bell housing and an engine, and we knew we were in. So great job, Bruce, AKA Texas Squirrel, owner of this awesome 996. It is a four liter, Flat six innovations build on this one, stage two. So this thing is awesome. And here's some video of me and Bruce in the car and he took me around the block and gave me a couple of pulls. All good here. Okay. Bruce, thanks, man. You have been a big help. Sure. Really, thank you. This was a great idea using the uh, the extensions to, to line things up and then 
using the bolts to uh, to get it out. So we are, well, I'm gonna get the engine and now Bruce is gonna take off because he didn't think he had to work, but I put him to work when he got here. But he but he did give me, like I said, a great, a great ride in that car. So thanks a lot, Bruce. Thanks. Someday, that will be me. I cannot wait. All right, I got the bolts torqued in on the transmission. Again, thanks to Bruce. He was a big help. Um, looking forward to getting this thing in now. I'm really, we're really close. I've got one missing bolt. Here's a little bit of an observation that I made while working on this engine, and it's a word of caution for everybody. So here are the screenshots that I took from the workshop manual. And note the length of the bolts here, 60, 90, 90, 45, 60, 60, right? So if you go to the catalog, which everyone should have, here's an image of the bolts and their length. So if you start with eight, which are the longest ones, number eights are showing 70 and 100. So the longest ones are, they're saying 100 millimeter. And that's not the case, they're 90. I tried to put hundreds in there and they bottomed out before they tightened up. So if you're doing your bolt inventory, I would go by the workshop manual and not the catalog because this is wrong. And I bought bolts for that. And uh, luckily I got them from the hardware store and not from Porsche because I couldn't have returned them. Anyway, just a word of advice. I'm not sure if this is a good idea but I'm gonna go ahead and attach the transmission brace here. It's gonna stick out a little bit, but I don't see it being a problem getting it under the car and it, I don't see it interfering with anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and take care of that. It takes a couple of these long bolts here with some nuts on one end. And then, um, yeah, we can get this thing in. All right, we are back under the car and I'm gonna take these braces off. If you recall in my engine out, I had to take these off, but I want I put them back on because I wanted to maintain structural integrity in the body because these are major supports here. And this thing's sitting and this thing's sitting for a long time without this brace holding it together. I don't know. With, with the convertible top, no roll bars. I would think the structure would be a little bowy. So anyway, I'm gonna get these off and then we will um slide the engine under here and get our plan together. Here we go. That is bringing back some memories of how close it was to not making it. Uh, just for you guys, uh, reference, these are the quick jacks with the SUV adapters and then the hockey puck to give you that enough room here to get underneath and clear it. So I did it right. I know that because I got the engine out. But uh, I had to drop this thing all the way down. Transmission, I didn't have to, but I may uh, just so that I can level it out. But you can see there, it's a little off. Yeah, not too bad at all. You know, when you have nice floors like this that have the uh, polyurethane or whatever finish on it. It makes it slippier so those wheels can slide laterally even though they don't want to. But you can see everything is lined up as best I can visually. Here's the motor mount right there. And then if you follow the line, it goes boop, close enough, right? So you 
and just do me a favor and check the clearances. That's what's gonna go right here, right? Okay? Uh-huh. And then, if you look at this, it's skinny and big. So, that's the bracket. Yep. And when we get up and up, you'll see, okay, the big one goes here, and then the skinny one goes there, and then that slides right into this clippy thingy, and you clip it in. All right. All right, and then there's another one back here for that foam that just popped out. Mm-hmm. That we'll have to get when we raise. Nineteen looks like. Come here. I see your booty. Let's see. First guess. It's happening, babe. It's happening. I know. One. There it is. Hey, Yogi. Wait. Wait. <laughs> Witness mark. back <laughs> <laughs> all right man engines in thanks to yogi mama she helped me keep me honest she handled the the lifting here while i was under the car with the transmission getting that up and in and then i reached max height on my lift so we had to lower the quick jack down to meet in the middle just like we did when we took the engine out so everything is everything's in the, I just got to route all the plumbing now and get the electrical stuff reconnected. And then in the next video, we can start this bad boy. But I can tell you it's not going to happen next week, okay? Because my wife and I are going on our first ever vacation. We've been married 13 years, almost 13. And we have never been on a vacation alone. We've been on vacations with our families and all that, but we've never gone on a vacation. In fact, we've, been, we've never even had a honeymoon. So I'm going to kill two birds with one stone here and do a vacation and a honeymoon. Uh, but we're going to Mexico City, so if I see some cool cars, I'll be sure to put some videos up on YouTube Shorts, but it's a vacation, something that Yogi Mama and I needed a long, long time ago. So the hard part is done. Now we've got to plumb everything up, get the electrical systems plugged back in, and then we can start this engine. I can't wait. Thank you guys for joining me through this whole process. Again, thanks to Bruce for coming over yesterday and helping me get that transmission together with the engine because that was very very challenging and uh, if this is your first time joining hopefully you saw something you liked and you liked enough to at least hit that thumbs up and if you liked it even more then hit that subscribe because this is only one of many projects coming in Yogi's Garage we're working on we're going on our third year at Yogi's Garage and I anticipate a lot of growth in the upcoming year so thanks for watching like and subscribe and we'll see you next time on Yogi's Garage. Yo, yo, microphone check, make it a microphone check. Give it a microphone, I make the make it a microphone dead. Don't step to me, newbie, I can truly be moody. I could have played the bridge in the movies. I've been a part-time shadow cat, part-time. That is not a guy that 